Hi, and welcome to this Monday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Great to have you in the conversation. I hope you had a terrific Father's Day, especially if you are a dad. Uh, I've got a couple of columns I hope I can get to today that talk about uh, one is from a daughter talking about her memories of her father, how much he meant to her, and what she reflected looking back on his life. He's been dead now for about 10 years. But reflecting back on her relationship with him, her life with him, she realized, you know, the things that really mattered were the small things, the very simple things, the things of ordinary life. It wasn't the spectacular things that he did for her or with them as a family, the vacation. It was the ordinary things. Those are the things that resonated in her uh, memory, and she writes this basically a love letter to her father 10 years after he's gone. And, you know, the thing that struck me is I wonder how much of what she says in this column she said to her father before he died. And my guess is maybe not a lot. And I wonder how many fathers out there, uh, a lot of you have got daughters, you've got sons, and maybe I'm willing to bet that they appreciate you and are grateful for your presence in their life far more than they've ever expressed to you. Sometimes it can be awkward and difficult to express those personally, to express those when people are still alive, but I'm willing to bet, dads, you've had a tremendous impact on your sons and on your daughters, maybe far more than you will ever find out until you take your place in the age to come. So be encouraged, and we'll read some excerpts of those as the program develops. Got a lot we're going to get to today. More on the Bo Bergdahl situation, situation in Iraq. This um, mess with the IRS and these lost emails, that's a total debacle, a total scam, total sham. There's no way in the world those emails have been lost, and we'll explain why that is the case and talk to you about other developments. Uh, I've got a column today that's up at our website, rightlyconcerned.com, uh, calling for the uh, a suspension of Islamic immigration. It follows up on some comments that I had for you on Friday, a column by Kevin Williams at National Review Online. I'm going to revisit a little bit of that with you today as we play sound bites from that escalating conflict over there. Now, before we jump into all of that, I want to read some words of wisdom from the scriptures uh, dealing with th th this reality that the world just doesn't understand us. Uh, you know, I had a very contentious interview this morning with uh, Tom Hartman on the Tom Hartman program on this March for Marriage on Thursday, and he just doesn't get it. He doesn't see it. He virulently resists any biblical understanding of marriage. He wants to nitpick and throw a whole bunch of chaff in the air. And you ask yourself the question, why is it that people are so difficult when it comes to spiritual things? Or why is it that they just don't seem to be able to get it? I mean, it's clear to us. It's plain that when we are in touch with the Scriptures, we are in touch with the ultimate source of wisdom. And yet people in the world, people that are smart, people that are educated, people that are intelligent— Obviously very bright. They just don't get it. They, they just don't see it. And things that are obvious to you and I and transparent and plain and self-evident to you and to me, they just simply do not get it. They don't grasp it. And it's a puzzle to us. But Paul explains why that's the case in this passage. Now, here's what he says. Yet among the mature, that is those who have come to faith in Christ, we do impart wisdom. In other words, the world doesn't recognize it as wisdom. But we do. We are among the mature. That is, we have come to a mature understanding of God. We've come to a mature understanding of the role that the revelation of God plays in life. Now, Paul, when he uses the word we here all the way through this paragraph, I believe he's talking about him and the other apostles. Not talking about Christians in general, but talking about himself as an apostle. We, that is, we apostles in the revelation that we have preserved for you in the Scriptures, we as the apostles of Jesus Christ, we do impart wisdom, although we said it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. And that's clear. He says, we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. So this isn't something new. God decreed this wisdom for our benefit before he ever created the earth. But now the fullness of it has just come to light through the gospel through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so the wisdom that we impart is a secret wisdom, and it is a hidden wisdom. It's a wisdom that we can only know if God chooses to bring it to life. It's a wisdom that must be revealed to us. We can't know it unless God chooses to reveal it to us. And that's one of the reasons why the world has a problem 
with revealed religion, which is what Christianity is, because they want to figure things out uh, for themselves, and they place themselves in the seat of highest judgment. They're not going to accept anything unless in their judgment they think it is right. So they don't like any of this business about God revealing things to us uh, that are true. None of the rulers of this age understood this, he says, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That's obvious. If they'd recognized the wisdom that came from God, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. But these are the rulers of this age. So it shouldn't surprise us by rulers of this age. He's talking about political rulers, talking about cultural leaders, icons, captains of industry who just simply don't seem to understand. You know, that's a lot of the most important and most influential, most powerful people in our culture simply do not uh, get it. And that's why they still to this day crucify the Lord of glory. They are still hostile to Christ. They're hostile to the followers of Christ. They're hostile to Christianity. President Obama today issued an edict that will prohibit any Christian company from doing business with the federal government. You heard me right. He issued an edict that will prohibit any Christian company from doing business with the federal government. They've got to, they've got to endorse the whole range of the LGBT agenda or they can't do business with the federal government. That is hostility toward Christianity. He is a ruler of this age who is hostile toward the things of uh, God. But he says, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, that is those things that man cannot figure out on his own, these are the things that God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. So what Paul is saying, look, these things are in the mind and the heart of God. The Holy Spirit searches the heart and mind of God to understand even the deep things of God. The Spirit then has revealed to us apostles what the Spirit has discovered that are in the in the heart and mind of God, the deep things there, and we, Paul says, in turn, have passed them on to you. And why does not the world uh, understand this? He says, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself judged by no one. So um, we're naturally frustrated with the rulers of this age, but Paul simply says it's impossible for them to understand the deep things of God. They do not have the Holy Spirit of God within them. That's why they're hostile to Christianity. That's why they do not understand the revelation of God. Well, let's go to prayer. Father, we affirm in Jesus' name that your message is in fact a message of wisdom among those who are mature, but that it is not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. We know that they do not understand your wisdom or they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. We thank you that you offer to us a secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden for ages past, but that you destined for our glory before time began. We delight in the truth that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what you have prepared for those who love you. We thank you that you have revealed these things to us but in the scripture by your spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.